Welcome students. Today we will talk about diversity in leaf size and shape. Leaf is an above ground, green, flattened lateral structure attached to a stem and functioning as the principal organ of photosynthesis and transpiration in most plants. Leaves are typically flat, it's laminar, and thin which evolved as a means to maximize the surface area directly exposed to light. All leaves are not photosynthetic as they may be modified wholly to bud scales and spines or partly to form tendrils. Not all plants have true leaves. Non-vascular plants like bryophytes although have flattened leaf-like structures that are rich in chlorophyll. These are not considered true leaves by all botanists since they lack vascular tissue. Leaves are commonly classified into two basic types, that's microphylls and megaphylls, depending upon their presumed phylogenetic origin. A microphyll is a lateral outgrowth of stem, for example, in Lycopodium, Selaginella, etc. A megaphyll is regarded as having been derived from a branch that became limited in growth and assumed a leaf-like form. For example, in higher pteridophytes and spermatophytes. Depending upon the duration, leaves are of evergreen, deciduous, and fugacious types. In evergreen type, the leaves continue to survive and function for one or more years. In deciduous type, the leaves die and fall soon after the growing season of the plant is over. In fugacious type, the leaves fall off almost soon after their emergence. Morphologically, the leaf is the most variable plant organ in the spermatophytes. The collective term for all the types of leaves appearing in the plant is the phylum. Phylums have been classified into four types. Number one, foliage leaves or photosynthetic leaves. Second, cataphylls, that's leaves that appear on buds and on underground stems. Third, hypsophylls, various types of bract that accompanies the flowers. And fourth, profiles, these are floral organs like sepals and petals and others. Foliage leaves are the principal photosynthetic organs. A structurally complete foliage that is photosynthetic leaf typically consists of number one a lamina that is the leaf blade where most of the green tissue is located. Second a petiole that is leaf stalk which supports the blade on the axis and provides the root for transfer of water and sugars to and fro from the leaf. And third leaf base. That's the portion by which the leaf is attached to the stem or branch. Not every species produces leaves with all of these structural components. In many angiosperms, leaves are sessile, consist entirely of lamina. In certain species, small paired lobes called stipules develop at the leaf base. The stipules may be adhered to the leaf base or are present as free appendages and in others stipules are not obvious. In some plants, stipules are persistent structures, resemble with leaflets and perform photosynthetic function too, as in pisum. Leaves are classified into simple and compound depending on whether the stalk bears one or more leaflets. A leaf is said to be simple in which the lamina is either entire or incised to various extents but not down to the midrib or petiole so that it does not break up into separate lobes or leaflets. Whereas in compound leaf the leaf blade is incised up to the midrib or petiole thus dividing it into two or more segments called leaflets. In later case, the common stalk is called a rachis. 
if all leaflets arise from one point as rays and thus seem to be radiating from a common point like fingers from the palm, then it is called the palmately compound leaf. And if the leaflets arise from the sides of the rays, the leaf is called a pinnately compound leaf. Now types of palmately compound leaves. These are of five types. Unifolate, bifolate, trifolate, quadrifolate and multifolate which is also called a digitate. Now unifolate. A single leaflet is articulated to the petiole. For example, in citrus, lemon, etc. Now, bifolate, two leaflets are articulated to the petiole. For example, in Belenites Roxburghi. Trifolate, three leaflets are articulated to the petiole. For example, Edelmar Milos. Quadrifolate, four leaflets are articulated to the petiole. For example, Paris quadrifolia and multifolate that is digitate. Five or more leaflets articulate to the petiole and spreading like fingers from the palm. For example, Bombex malabarica. Now, pinnately compound leaves. It is a compound leaf with the leaflets arranged along the sides of common axis, the ridges. Pinnately compound leaves are of many types. Unipinnate, bipinnate, tripinnate and decompound. Unipinnate. A pinnately compound leaf bearing the leaflets directly on the ridges. Unipinnate leaves are of two types. Number one, peripinnate. That is a unipinnate leaf with even number of leaflets. For example, in Tamarindus indica, or Acacia, etc. Now, imperipinnate leaf. That is a unipinnate leaf with odd number of leaflets. For example, neem, rose, etc. Now, bipinnate. It is a twice pinnate compound leaf. The pinnae are dissected again into pinules. Thus, the main rates produced which bear the pinules. For example, Acacia nilotica, Mimosa pudica, etc. Then, tripinnate, a trispinnate compound leaf. That is, the secondary axis produces the tertiary axis which bears the pinules. For example, in Moringa. Now decompound. It is a compound leaf which is more than trispinate. For example, in carrot, fennel, coriander, etc. Now leaf size. Leaves show great diversity in size. Leaf size is one of the most plastic traits of a tree. And it is not uncommon to see great variability within genera, species, individuals within a species and even between the same individuals at different stages of development. For example, sapling, canopy tree or on different parts of the same tree. Leaf size range from tiny scales along stems which are less than 1 mm long to the leaves of Valvicia that are several meters long. The raffia palm, that is raffia regalis of tropical Africa has huge pinnate leaves up to 24 meters long. The leaves of the Amazonian palm, that is Manicaria saxifera, are nearly 8 meters long and have been listed by some authors as the longest undivided leaf of any plant. Marojegia darani is a palm native to Madagascar with a leaf up to 5 meters in length that is twied only once at the tip. And geopalm that is Jonas Dijmania altifrons, a palm native to Thailand is with a leaf up to 4 meters long that is completely undivided. Common water fern that is Azola filiculoids 
has leaves that are only 1 millimeter in length. The minute California wildflower called pygmy weed that is Crassula erecta has minute fleshy leaves about 1.3 millimeters long. Many species in the cypress family that is Cupricaceae have overlapping scale like leaves only 1 to 2 millimeters in length. This includes cypress that is Cupris species, junipers that is Junipera species and citrus that is species of Cama cypress and Thuja. The body of duckweeds has paired gourd cells and stomata on its upper surface and superficially resembles the leaf particularly in the flattened duck weeds, Spirodilla, Landolcia and Lemna. Now leaf shape. On the basis of shape of lamina, leaves are of many types like all shaped that tapering to slender stiff point, short stiff margins, narrowing to a point as in single seed juniper. Corded, that is heart shaped with a sinus and rounded lobes at the base and ovate in general outline. For example, Ceda cordata, Abutilon indica, etc. Then deltoid, these are triangular like the Greek delta letter, bottom two corners often rounded off as in leaves of Populus glauca. Then elliptical, these are oval in outline, narrow to rounded ends and widest at or about the middle. For example, we have leaves of guava. Falcid, that is hooked like a sickle or beak of a falcon. For example, crinum asiaticum. Then flabulate, fan shaped leaves, for example, jingo biloba. Then hastate that is shaped like an arrowhead and with the basal lobes pointing outwards. For example, caladium species, Xanthosoma sagittifolia. Then lanceolate that is lance shaped much longer than broad widening above the base and tapering to the apex. For example, nerium. Then linear shaped long and narrow, the sides parallel or nearly so as in blades of most grasses, for example Cypress rotundus or Texas baccata, etc. Then oblanceolate, opposed of lanceolate, a leaf broader at the distal third than at the middle and tapering towards the base, for example Nephelium, Salix lasciolepsis. Then oblong, longer than broad and with the margin running more or less parallel up to its length. For example, Catharanthus roseus, banana, obovate, reverse of ovate, the apical half broader than the basal. For example, Cassia obtusifolia leaflet, Cortinus obovatus. Orbicular, that is the leaf blade circular in outline. For example, in common smoke tree, that is Cortinus cogigaira. Then ovate, it is with an outline like that of hen's egg, that is broader at the base than at the apex. For example, Hydrangea arboriscans or China rose. Next is perfoliate. That is leaf surround stem directly attaching to it. Stem appears to go through the center of leaf. There is no petiole. For example, in trumpet honeysuckle, that is Lonicera sempervirens. Reniform, this is kidney shaped. It is rounded above and notched below. For example, Typhonium diversifolium, that is Indian pennywort, Acarum europium. Then rhombic, diamond shaped, 
with four sides, petiole attached at one of the corners. For example, Van Horspiria, then Sagittate, shaped like an arrowhead and with the acute basal lobes pointing downwards or concavely towards the stalk. For example, Sagittaria latifolia, then scale like, leaves overlap alternating down the stems, for example, Toja occidentals. Spatulate, spoon shaped, that's broad and round at the top and narrow towards the base. For example, Japanese Burberry, that's Berberis thangbergi, or Calendula. Then Lyrate, divided into a large terminal lobe and a few smaller lobes, which become gradually smaller towards the base. For example, in Brassica, Fruticulosa, or Mustard, etc. Or Laurate, that's strap shaped, for example, in Valisneria species. Acicular, long, narrow, and straight like a needle, for example, in Pinus longifolia. Runsneed, these are coarsely serrated to sharply incised with the teeth pointing towards the base, for example, Taraxicum officinale. Obcordate, reverse to cordate, that is, the base is rounded or cunate but deeply notched at the tip. For example, Bahonia variegata. Enciform, flattened vertically, long, erect like a sword. For example, Typha angustifolia. Lunate, that's half lunar, that's half moon in shape, with two lower ends pointed slightly downwards. For example, Adiantum lunatum. Ligulate. Narrowly cunate tongue like structure with a transversely cut and irregularly lobed or incised tip. For example, Solidago virguaria. Pandurate, fiddle shaped, obovate with a marked concavity slightly above the base on each side. For example, Calatrops gigantea. Then peltate round or nearly round and stalked at the center below. For example, Tropolium majus. Now leaf margins. The structure of margins of the lamina of different plants is much variable. Some of the commonly available patterns are entire, that's even with a smooth margin, without any toothing. For example, Phlox stolonifera or madar or mango. Then crenate. We have wavy toothed dentate with rounded teeth such as in bryophyllum or hydrocotyle. Incised. Cut irregularly more or less deeply and sharply and with intermediate condition between tooth and lobes. For example, Stephandra incisa. Dentate with sharp spreading, rather coarse indentations or teeth that are perpendicular to the margin. For example, chestnut, melon. Biserate, each tooth serrated again as in leaves of Kyria japonica or Almas americana. Then lobed. These are divided into rounded or pointed sections that are less than halfway to the midrib. Can be symmetrical or asymmetrical, vary in sizes depending upon species. For example, Renanculus. Lobulate. Small curved sections, smaller than lobed along the leaf margins. For example, River Birch, that's Betula nigra. Revolute. Let's margins roll downwards to underside of leaf. For example, blue princess meserve holly. Serrate, sawtooth with asymmetrical teeth pointing forward. For example, china rose or amelia. Cerulate, finely serrate. For example, prunus persica. 
spinose bearing spines along leaf margins or tiny spines at nodes on stem for example argimon undulate or sinuate that's wavy and irregular leaf margins these are called undulate for example polyelthia rumex species denticulate finely toothed for example coccinea cordifolia or lofa cylindrica then palmately lobed indented with the indentations reaching to the center such as in coccinea grand sleeves lacerate torn irregularly cleft or cut as in many genera of ranunculaceae cleft divided in or about the middle into divisions as palmately or pinnately cleft leaf for example in many ferns then pinnatifid cleft or parted in pinnate way as in leaves of phaeansi adonis as spelinum alternans pectinate comb like or pinnate with very narrow divisions as in leaves of vero Achillea atrata, palmate, that sloped or divided into a palm-like fashion. For example, larkspur or castor, crispate, curled extremely undulate. For example, parsley tagetes. Then leaf tip or leaf apex. The apex or tip of lamina also shows a wide diversity of structure, and is modified in various ways. some of the common forms are as we have acuminate sides curving concavely upwards and inwards then tapering to a fine point on the leaf apex in a concave manner for example ficus religosa then acute that's ending in a sharp but not prolonged point for example china rose apiculate terminated by a short sharply angled structure projected from an otherwise rounded tip for example dalbergia then cirrhose the tip bears a slender coiled or tendril like structure for example gloriosa polygonatum cirrhofolium then imaginate The apex of the leaf is notched towards the petiole at the midvein. For example, in Bahonia, then Macronid, a rounded apex terminated abruptly in a short point on midvein. For example, leaflets of Acacia obtusifolia, or Crotalaria macronata, obcordate, inversely heart shaped, deeply notched at the top. for example leaflets of oxalis corniculata then obtuse rounded leaf margin for example banyan and rounded these are wide curved shape that wider than obtuse with less of a point while not being so flattened as to approach truncate for example common smoke tree Cortinus quagigaira, truncate, leaf base or apex is perpendicular to leaf petiole and relatively straight across, ending abruptly with a flat end that looks cut off, as in leaves of bahonia, anguina, or caryota urens. Now leaf base, like apex. the structure of leaf base is also of diverse type some common types are acute margins meet the petiole at a sharp angle without forming a tapering structure for example polyelthia longifolia atuniate leaf tissue tapers down the petiole towards the base to a narrow base always having some flush leaf on either side of the petiole for example in mangifera indica auriculate 
two lower ends extended to form two lateral lobes which completely or partially encircle the stem at the node. For example, in Calotropis gigantea, caudate, heart shaped leaf base with the notched part at the base of the leaf. For example, Seda caudata, cunate, narrow wedge shaped leaf base tapering to a point at the petiole. For example, can score a diffusa. Oblique, unequal leaf bases, slanting one side larger, wider or rounded than the other. For example, solenum torum, rounded. Lamina margins curve slowly and then meet the petiole forming a rounded structure. For example, ficus bengalensis, truncate. Leaf base or apex is perpendicular to leaf petiole and relatively straight across. For example, Emmer maple, that's Acer tataricum, subspecies Janella. Conate perfolate, two opposite sessile leaves with their bases fused. For example, Canscora diffusa or Lonicera flavor, etc. Sagittate. Leaf with air shaped basal lobes turned downwards and inwards. For example, Arabis perfoliata, a tower mustard. Hestate. Leaf with a pair of basal lobes spreading gradually outwards. For example, Polygonum auberti. Pellate. Leaf with petiole attached near the center on the ventral surface of orbicular lamina, for example, nilumbo or garden nasturtium, etc. With this, we concluded today's topic that was about diversity in leaf size and shape, wherein we discussed various morphological features of leaf, like the size, form, the apex, the margins, and the base. All these features are generally used for identification of plants. Thank you. <music>